Have you ever wondered how banks make money? Banks make money from their retail customers, people like you and me, as well as from merchants, department stores, retail outlets, restaurants, bars, etc. They charge customers interest on loans they provide, as well as service account fees. They make money off of merchants every time a customer of that merchant uses a debit or credit card at its place of business. The fee merchants pay banks is called an interchange fee. In this video, I'm going to give you a breakdown of the three big ways in which banks make money. Net interest margin, interchange and fees. Net interest margin. Customers make deposits into banks and the banks typically use most of those deposits to provide loans, such as for your home, auto, student, etc. These loans have interest rates tied to them that customers need to pay in order to get the loan in the first place. This means that the money earned on these loans is revenue for the bank and some of that earned money is given back to customers in the form of interest within checking and savings accounts. The money that the bank keeps is considered the net interest margin. Put it another way, the difference between how much the bank earns on their loans versus what they pay back to the customers is their net interest margin. For example, someone can get a $100,000 mortgage from a bank, but it will come with an annual percentage rate, APR, that the customer needs to pay in order to get that loan. The APR is the cost to borrow $100,000 from the bank. To illustrate, you can get a 30-year fixed rate loan for a 4% APR. On a 30-year loan, the customer will pay roughly $72,000 in interest to the bank. Then the bank will give some of that earned interest to the customer's checking and savings accounts. The amount left over is the bank's net investment margin. In reality, there are all sorts of loans with varying interest rates. Another common example is credit cards. When people don't pay off their credit cards in full, they are charged interest on the balance of their credit card. The APR that people pay for credit cards can range anywhere from zero to upwards of 25%. The money or interest the bank earns on these unpaid credit cards is another example of the banks loaning out customers' deposits. Earning money on those deposits, paying some of that money back to customers' checking and savings accounts and pocketing the rest. Interchange. Whenever you use a credit or debit card to buy something at a store, that store usually has to pay what's called an interchange fee. Most of the interchange fee goes to your bank and some goes to the store's bank. This interchange fee covers the cost of handling credit and debit transactions. Interchange fee rates are set by credit card companies. Among other factors, interchange fee rates can vary by provider. But the way in which they are structured is that it's a percentage of the transaction plus a flat rate. For example, if the interchange rate is 2% plus 10 cents and someone bought $100 worth of item, the total interchange fee the store would pay would be $2.10. The store would get $97.90 of the actual purchase and the $2.10 interchange fee goes to the bank that provided you the credit card. When you go into a store or restaurant and see that there is a card minimum, it's most likely because of the interchange fee. The flat rate portions of the interchange fee for smaller transactions can really add up for businesses. Fees. Most people are familiar with banking fees. Banks find ways in which to charge their customers all sorts of fees. With many traditional banks, your checking or savings account agreement will have a long section listing out all the ways in which they charge you fees and penalties. Some common fees and penalties include monthly service fees, minimum deposit limits, withdrawal penalties, ATM fees, overdraft fees, and foreign transaction fees. Sometimes banks 
I have so many fees. They have online guides on how to navigate all of the fees associated with your checking or savings accounts. Some of the most common fees that people get hit with are ATM fees and overdraft fees. ATM fees have hit a record high for the 14th year in a row. Additionally, the average overdraft fee has increased virtually every year for the last 20 years. Banks could help prevent debit card overdrafts at checkouts and ATMs by denying the transaction or warning the customer, though doing so would eliminate the opportunity to charge the overdraft fee. Unsurprisingly, the majority of people would prefer that their debit card purchase get denied at checkout if it meant they would not get hit with an overdraft fee. The bottom line, to recap, banks can typically make money in three ways, net interest margin, interchange fees, and banking fees. By better understanding how banks make money, you might find yourself learning how to look out for fees and understand if banks are truly working in your best interest. Before you settle for a bank, you make sure you shop around and compare the fees. I hope this video was of any value. If that's the case, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, not to miss on any other videos. As always, I'm looking forward to a dialogue with you. So see you down in the comment section below. Have a good day. See you in the next video.